when I was little, when I was younger, I was bullied a lot and picked on and teased a lot. In, my, in elementary school, in middle school, even a little ways into high school. And unfortunately, it's a pretty common thing for kids to go through when they're young. For me, it started, I don't know, second grade, third grade, really little, early childhood. And it was for everything they can think of. I was that, that go-to kid that people would pick on for one reason or another. And I addressed it a little bit. I told my parents, um, talked to some counselors, brought in the kids that were picking on me, one-on-one -on -one peer mediation. But that didn't really solve the problem. And it followed me into middle school. In middle school, however, everyone's trying to, you know, they're making their clicks, they're trying to be the cool kids, they're trying to fit in. And what they see all the popular kids doing is picking on everyone else. And so the people that I called my circle of friends, they joined in with them. They saw that I was being picked on. They didn't want to deal with it. I wasn't the cool kid. I wasn't involved in that crowd. I was the target of the abuse. And they joined in because they wanted to be those cool kids. So they sort of abandoned me. They, some of them actually joined in. Some of them picked on me. Some of them left me alone. Some of them didn't want to associate with me. And so I became very isolated in 6th grade, 7th grade, 8th grade. And around that time, I realized I was really sad and angry all the time. I couldn't do a whole lot to make myself happy. And, you know, I was a pretty bright kid. I took some time, went on Google, looked up what I was dealing with, typed in, you know, sad, angry, bullied, and I came up with depression as most of the results. And I didn't really know what it was. I, knew, I got my definition on Wikipedia, Yahoo Answers, other people telling me what they dealt with. And I realized, hmm, this seems like what I'm dealing with. But I also knew that no one talked about it. From media portrayal, through how my family dealt with mental health and depression, there's a huge stigma around in our society. And everyone is taught to keep quiet about it. Everyone is taught to keep it inside. Don't let anyone know that you're dealing with it because you're going to be labeled as a freak, someone who's breaking down, someone who's having a mental breakdown, someone who can't handle the pressure. You're always told, especially as a guy, be a man, suck it up, don't show your emotion, don't cry. And that's what I did. I listened to what everyone was telling me, what I was telling myself, and I internalized it. And when you're dealing with depression, and you're not trying to let anyone see what you're doing, see what you're dealing with, when you're sad all the time, when you're hurting all the time, you put on this mask, and you get really good at acting. You will laugh when people tell a joke, but you won't feel anything. You will smile when you get a surprise, but on the inside, you're not feeling happy. And as I entered high school, the bullying stopped. I was no longer picked on. I was still depressed. I was still very rarely happy, very rarely looking forward to anything. And this confused me a lot, because I'm always telling myself, I can get through this, I can get better, I can get healthy, I can do this by myself, I don't need anyone's assistance, I'm not weak, I know I'm strong, I know I can get through this. But I can't. And it gets worse, because with depression, it's like this really cruel downward spiral, spiral where if you don't address the problem, you don't get the help you need, you're going to get worse. And for me, that started towards the end of my freshman year of high school. I became suicidal. And now, that's not to say I ever made some sort of attempt on my life. I never did. But I thought about death a lot. My own. And strangely enough, it was a comforting feeling, comforting thought. Because while my life is spinning out of control and I can't really, I feel like I can't do anything my own way and nothing seems to go right for me, 
there is something I can do, albeit very drastic, very finite, but it gave me a point of focus in my life, something that I could think about as something that I have, I'm in control of. And so it'd be comforting. But, I mean, I didn't like thinking about it. I didn't like thinking about my own death. It was scary, but it was there. And so going into my 10th grade, year of 10th grade, depression gets worse. I'm still feeling more sad, all the more sad. Happy even less, very rarely happy. I'm noticing that I'm crying less. Even though I'm sad, I very rarely shed a tear for myself. And I sort of get a little scared now because I'm like, what's happening? I know I feel a couple emotions, sad, sadness and anger and hurt, but I'm not reacting to them anymore. And the suicidal thoughts occurred more often. I actually made a list in my head of the people that I cared about, a few friends that I thought I had, who I would feel sad about, feel bad about leaving if I were to take my own life. And that list can never include someone in my family, because I would always love them, I always feel sad for them. But I just had a running list in my head of the friends that I would say, you know, I'm sorry I did this to you, I'm sorry I left you, you were always good to me. And I sort of decided that if that list ever got down to zero, I would really start considering when I would take my own life. So moving into my junior year of high school, that list getting shorter. And it sounded a couple people, but right at the beginning of my junior year, my parents announced that they are going to separate. And I told myself, you know, I've seen this coming for a long time. They never really got along that well in the last couple of years. I'm okay with this. They're going to get along better now. But I didn't realize how much it really affected me at the time. And very quickly through my 11th year of, high school, of school, junior year, I spiraled down. I was suicidal all the time. If I wasn't thinking about school, if I wasn't studying, I was thinking about death. And that really scared me. And the list in my head of the people that I feel sad about leaving kept dwindling, either because I got out of touch with these people or they started picking on me as well. For some one reason or another, I didn't care about them anymore. And this list got down to one person. And at that point, I started getting really, really scared for myself. I was no longer crying. I was very, really sad or angry or anything. I just felt numb to the world. Nothing fazed me anymore. And it was around that time that I really started fearing for my own safety. But I couldn't tell anybody. I was so ingrained in me that depression is something that you hide from everyone else, that you put on this mask and you don't tell anyone what you're dealing with because no one will accept you. Stop me from getting the help I needed. But there was one day that I remember very clearly where this friend was on Facebook at the same time I was. And I was staring at the screen at her name with the little icon that says web that I can chat with her. And I had this moment. And in your life, you can look back and you can say, you know, this moment made me who I am today, this moment was a drastic change, a pivotal moment in my life, but you don't really see them coming at you. But I saw this one coming clear as day. I saw this, my friend online, I saw that if I asked for help right now, I could change my life, even though it is the single scariest thing I could think of doing. But I did. I asked. I, I asked her if I could talk with her. And I told her, this is going to be very hard for me to say. It's going to scare It's probably going to scare her. I didn't know what she would think. I thought she would react with I didn't really know. Hatred, shock, ab abandoned me, they don't want to deal with me. But I took the leap of faith and I asked her for help. I told her my story, the same one I'm telling you today. And it is the single best thing I've ever done in my life. 
after Samantha Peter screamed for about two hours, crying harder than I've ever cried in my entire life, as I'm finally releasing all these emotions and sharing with somebody something I've never, I haven't shared in five years. She convinced me to tell my parents, and I couldn't confront them. I, I knew I wouldn't be able to tell them face to face, so I printed out that Facebook conversation and left their phone and fine. It probably wasn't the best idea because they really freaked out. I thought it was sort of like a suicide note, and they came running into my room in the middle of the night freaking out. But they got me some help. They accepted me. I was shocked that they accepted what I was dealing with, and took me to a psychiatrist and a psychologist. Got me some medication, albeit it didn't really help me that much. But I started this going down the road that I needed to travel to get better. So we come now to a point in my life where I am still very, very, very depressed. But a few pivotal people in my life, they know what I'm dealing with. And this is right around winter break, my junior year. When I came back from winter break, after sort of dealing with this with a few people now, my parents always ask me if I'm okay, how am I feeling. I got a grade back in my history class, They're a really terrible grade. I, but for some reason, I thought that grade was the end of my academic career. And it was a completely irrational thought, but I thought that I would never get into college, I was going to fail out of high school. can't tell you why I thought this. And what I didn't know at the time is that part of the recovery from depression is going to be getting worse because you really have to address your past. But by sharing with a couple people in my life, I was able to share the weight of my history of my depression and start to get better. I was able to address my past finally. I knew why I was depressed. I was bullied a lot when I was little. But I was finally able to look at this and accept that it happened. I, was nev I never forgave anyone for what they did to me, but I could accept my past as something as part of my life. And by doing that, I was able to start getting better. I was able to recover. I was able to talk about it with more and more people and draw strength from it. Because while going through depression is the worst thing that's ever happened to me, it's probably the best thing that's ever happened to me. It has showed me that that is the bottom. When you are that down and that sad and that unwilling to live, that is the absolute bottom for me. And I know how much stronger I am now. And what I'm trying to say by sharing this with all of you today is that it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to suffer from a mental illness. It's okay to say I suffer from depression. Because although society now it still tells us that mental illness is something you keep to yourself and you should be ashamed of it, you should fear it, you should keep, you put on the mask and go about your life hiding from everyone. It's okay to ask for that help, it doesn't make you weak. Because our mind is as important as our body. And yet, when we break a bone, everyone runs towards you to sign your cast until you get better soon. But if you tell someone your mind is broken, everyone runs away. And we need to have that stop. Because it's okay to be emotional. It's okay to say that you need help. It's okay to say you suffer from depression. It's okay to say, I have a mental illness. Because it doesn't define you. It's something that is a part of your life, but it is not who you are. And you can get better if you just ask for help. Thank you.